it's supposed to be at midnight. Let me just double check. FIFA.com. Been on this website too many times. Senior sign on. Shifty work into the box. And across, it's in! Oh, it's Lohu! It's a dream return! Hey everyone, welcome to Casual FC, a World Cup preview pod, at least for a short while. I'm your host, Mario Salazar, with my co host, Angela Morales. If you're catching us in the middle of our series, guess what? We have a first episode that recaps all things World Cup. So go back, listen to that one. It'll kind of help prepare you and share it with a friend. Give them something to learn. Just a recap on how to watch everything. Fox is going to be the official broadcaster for English language in the U.S. So anything on the Fox network, Fox, FS1, FoxSports.com, the Fox app, any streaming apps like YouTube TV, Fubo, Sling, all of those, you know, you've, you've probably <laughs> signed up and forgot to delete most of those. So the one thing is to think about when looking at all of those is that if you are going to be streaming most of these, that you're going to have to have a TV login. So ask for someone, get your own, do what you got to do, but, you know, have fun and watch all of those. Telemundo is going to be the official broadcaster in Spanish in the U.S. That means all the matches will be on Telemundo and Universal um, channels. All matches will also be streaming in Spanish on Peacock, which that just makes life a lot easier. <laughs> just go ahead and stream it from <laughs> Peacock. And as we've been saying from before, if you if it's easier to watch it, watch it in Spanish. It's just more exciting. It's more fun. They the announcers care more. There's more passion. Uh, we might be biased because we're both <laughs> we're both Latino we're here. Both of, but yeah, we're both of the Latino variety. <laughs> exactly. Keep an eye on all our social feeds as we're going to be posting TV schedules and upcoming matches once we get out of the group stages too. So we'll be able to tell you where to find it, what time to find it, and if you have time to go hit a bar beforehand. So let's talk the group stages. In Group C, we are keeping our eye on our angel, Jun Endo, playing with Japan. Their first match is going to be on Saturday, July 22nd. Zambia versus Japan will be at midnight Pacific Standard Time. So, as we've been saying before, you're going to have to go Friday into that Saturday, 12 12 a.m. That's when the game's going to go. You've got the U.S. women's team playing at 6 o'clock on Friday, p.m., <laughs> prime time. So, you know, just stay up or take a nap or go get some tacos and <laughs> get yourself a little snack before yeah, the just game. have dinner, watch the U.S. game, have second dinner, stay up late for more soccer, stay up even later. Pro- I think there's a game after that. Like, just stay up all night and then sleep in and then go to brunch on Sunday and then do it again on Saturday night. It's worth yeah, it. There you go. <laughs> so the game's going to be on Fox. So national broadcast. Check, you know, Fox Channel 11 here. Your Fox app, the foxsports.com. Any of the apps where you've got terrestrial TV, like YouTube TV, Sling, all of those <laughs> good things. This time it's going to be on NBC Universo. It's not going to be on Telemundo. So just keep an eye out for that if you're looking for the Spanish broadcast. And... It's also going to be on Peacock streaming. For my money, I think I'm just going to watch everything on Peacock. It's just it's easier Same. and it's in it's in <laughs> Spanish. There might be some there might be some English broadcasting options. I know sometimes Teo de Ene would do a like when you hit the 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 SAP button, it actually went to English. <laughs> so you get the English, yeah. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you when you hit the the SAP button, it gives you. A, like the opposite, yeah. where the English is Spanish, it's normally Spanish to English, or vice versa. So just see what happens. Just check, Push some just buttons. check it out. I mean, we'll find out on the first day, but yeah, it's on the Pecan Cap streaming. So we've got Spain. 
Spain is actually coming off their best World Cup outing thus far. In 2019, they made it to the round of 16 and had a great showing. They played really well. Since then, there's been some turmoil, especially recently, within the team's structure and coaching. There was a whole bunch of players that said, we're not playing for this dude anymore. And then some cloudy things happened. I haven't really looked into it too much, but now a lot of those players re-signed with the national team. So like we talked about for Group A, there's a lot of issues that are surfacing in women's soccer internationally with issues within the federation and coaching and it's affecting rosters it's affecting playing time all kinds of stuff so we've said it before get ready to hear a lot about it but spain is still a really 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 good team regardless of all of the bs surrounding it right now players to watch jennifer edmoso she leads spain in scoring in, in the history of the Spanish national team, she is the number one scorer. I'm not sure if it's Alexia or Alexia, depending on which part of Spain. And I'm also pronouncing names with Mexican Spanish, not Spanish Spanish, because then if I go into yes. Spanish Spanish brain, I'll never come out. And then everybody <laughs> here in L.A. looks at me weird because I start to slur. My cousin lives in Spain, so that's where I was immersed with Spanish. So my Spanish is crazy. But, I get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my first trip to Spain, I came back and everybody's like, what are you saying? And I'm like, oh, right. Different language. <laughs> Same but different. Alexia Puteas, she, what I'm about to tell you is about to blow your mind. She is right, Spain's it. number two top scorer. So Jennifer Hermoso and Alexia are Spain's top scorers in general. Obviously major threats to any team they play. She is... Alexia is the first player to win UEFA's Women's Player of the Year, the Ballon d'Or Feminine, and the best FIFA Women's Player in 2021. So she's the first person to ever do to win all three in the same year, and that was just two years ago. Which that like I mean, what a season! What ah, a season! Geez. That okay, so. People yeah, gotta watch but, out. People gotta watch out right. for 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 Spain. They're they're gonna yeah. come in hot. But the thing is, is that's not even all of it. Like this is very much a. But wait, there's more. She did it again the next year too. What? Yeah. Yes. She repeated. She repeated all three awards. Like all huh? three. All three back to back years. Oh. Like unheard mm. of. Stupid good. Jeez. Just, I cannot wait to watch them because of this. Like you have, you're in the history of your team. Your two top scorers. They both like they go back and forth for top score. They go back and forth for most appearances. Like they own stats, obviously. For so offense, all of all of this, and they still had all these issues with the national team that there was yeah. a, their federation. Yep. That you want me to get on a soapbox about we've, we've, the, okay yeah we've, like we've got, you know we've got the episode coming we've got the episode coming yeah <laughs> all yeah, right there will be so big soapbox episodes in the off season <laughs> we'll 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 tag them with you know soapbox incoming yeah hashtag soapbox <laughs> so these two amazing players that we're going to keep an eye on so jennifer edmoso will be number 10 on the pitch and then Alexia Puteas will be number 11. Again, caveat with all of this, if you listen to our last episode, we are taking all these numbers from what is available on Fox Sports right now as far as the, the rosters. So if, they're, and if they end up with different numbers because, you know, the rosters, a lot of them just got set. They might be getting different numbers. Take it with a grain of salt. But Hermoso and Puteas. Are about to blow your minds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, just, I, I don't even know what to expect. I didn't realize that prior to, like, looking and, like, putting all this together so we had all the information in one place. Like, I didn't realize that they were stacked in the way that they were. Like, all of these teams are stacked for their, their teams, their, you know, like, all this kind of stuff. But not like this. Not like, oh, we have the... 
the best player in the world for the last two years. Okay. Like what? <laughs> in the last two years, like leading up into the World Cup year. I mean, yeah, like everybody comes into the World Cup and is like trying to be in their best form, play the best soccer they're ever going to play. But that's bonkers. Bonkers. Yeah. All right. All righty. So got... next, yeah, next on the docket is Costa Rica. This is also their second World Cup appearance. Before I start off with the player to watch, the veteran of the Costa Rican women's team, Shirley Cruz, has retired. So you won't see her familiar face on the pitch. She, it's wild. People are probably going to be like, oh, she's so old, whatever. She and I are the same age. I just, like, I'm <laughs> looking up, like, some history really quick, and I was like, oh, oh, cool. We're we're in our mid-30s, and according to sports, we've died. Like, just <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I, I I feel you. I that's I every time I look at a roster and their and their age and then I'm like, Yeah, no, me and you, we got the same no, you're way younger than I am. <laughs> yeah, like oh you're a decade younger than me. Neat. The interesting thing is that she announced her retirement after unexpectedly not making the roster. So no one Wait, people were people were confused, obviously. So yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I I wonder if it was by choice or if this was a like you weren't selected, and so she had you know, announced time to bow out. Yeah, she had announced that she would retire after the World Cup, and then didn't make the team, or you know whatever reasoning was not included on the roster and now we don't get to see her in it but that is a big a big loss for the costa rican team on the veteran like having a veteran that like deep in costa rican soccer culture but a familiar face a familiar name to pretty much anybody who has been following the nwsl over the last couple seasons is Raquel Rocky Rodriguez, who plays for the Portland Thorns. On the West Coast, we've talked about it. There's a bunch of Thorns fans up and down the coast because for a long time, the Thorns and the Rain were the only two West Coast teams, or yeah. including Utah, kind of, sort of. But we have a bunch of friends who are Thorns fans who have converted to ACFC now that we have a team. But Rocky Rodriguez is fantastic. <laughs> Rocky has 90 caps for Costa Rica and has scored 56 goals so no big deal <laughs> no, whatever you know well it's fine it's fine and because the thorns are so so stacked offensively she only has 40 appearances in three years and four goals like which is still insane <laughs> just like it's silly in the sense that you say like oh like oh they're this they're that it's like yes these are world-class soccer players and like, oh, they only have four goals. That's four more than I would ever have in my lifetime. So, more power to her. It's, she will make a difference four, for Costa Rica. Four more than I ever had while I was actually playing. So, <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. So, good luck to Costa Rica. Hit me with Zambia. What what you got for them? Oh, so wait, just 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 to go back one Ooh. quick second. Rocky Raquel Rodriguez will be number 11 oh, right, right. on the Costa Rican team. So just kind of keep your eye out, know who you're watching. And then, yeah, let's go on to Zambia. They are debutantes, our second debutante that we will be talking about in our little kind of series of the World Cup here. They have been a team that's been around since 1985. They're one of the first women's federations in any of the African countries. But, you know, again, this is the first time they've actually made the World Cup. They are known as the Copper Queens. I love that. I didn't. That is a cool nickname. And I think that stems from the fact, you know, copper is mined in Zambia. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And in looking them up, we've got two players to watch that we're going to call out here. We've got Barbara Banda who is the first player to ever score oh, so good. back-to-back hat tricks in the Olympics. And this was in 2021 versus China and the Netherlands. So 
Did you watch any of those games? I did. I did. And I'm like, I'm trying oh to rack my, my brain God. here being like, how did I yeah. like, miss this? It could have been just, you know. <laughs> it was late. It was late. <laughs> All the games were late. It was so late. <laughs> Which I'm I'm always trying to stay up. But then again, also 2021, I've already had, I already got two kids and, you know, there's, yeah. there's only so much. <laughs> there are do. small, small babies at that point. Yeah. Those games were bonkers. It was one of those you're like, oh, wow. This is a player I'd never heard of. And they're having a time of their lives at the Olympics. And then like two days later, I get an alert that she did it again. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's from the other day. And I'm like, no, that's from right now. That <laughs> The opponent is different. Like, you know, it's like I'm I'm looking at it like, wait, is this real life? And every single goal was a banger. It wasn't one of those where you're like, oh, that, you know, she snuck that one in. It was just so authoritative. Yeah. And just. I'm so excited to watch her play on this stage. And as we mentioned in in our last pod, we did mention that there was a player that reached the fastest hat trick in World Cup history. So just to, mm-hmm. you know, for the for the people that need to know, a hat trick means three goals by the same player in one game, right? Like we said, three goals in a game by a team is a big feat. Three, it's a lot. Three goals by one player is huge and then doing it back to back like having two games where you've scored three goals it just means like you are pinpoint you you are on top of your game and you know yeah you're just dialed in yeah you you know what you're going to be doing and then we've got our second player to watch here is okay please forgive me with this do you, want me, do you want me to take her name try, over? Try to, yeah. Okay, so Rachel Kundanji. There we go. Thank you. Rachel, I, <laughs> I needed to hear it. That's the thing. Rachel yeah, Kundan, totally. Kundanji also scored in their friendly against Germany that they won. This was their send-off game. But Germany and Zambia played a, a friendly, like, last week. Like, so today is, what, the 11th? Yeah, it was last weekend. And they beat Germany, which is huge on the world stage. Yeah. So we've got. Sorry, I cut you off because I got way too excited. It was major. <laughs> it's news. all good. I mean, like, <laughs> like we've been saying that the World Cup is going to be full of surprises. You'll honestly never know what's going to be happening. Everything's just going to be mm-hmm. off the wall because it's a short tournament. It's, but it's it's a global thing. So like you're playing people from all over the world and. Right. You honestly can't fully predict what's going to happen because, you know, the underdogs will find that fifth gear, find that sixth, seventh, eighth gear and push through. <laughs> and you never know. And they surprise might surprise you. you yeah. As, you know, Zambia did with Germany. So to keep your eyes on them, we've got Barbara Benda, who will be number 11 on the pitch. And then we've got Rachel Kundinanji who is number 17. And with that, let's roll into our last national team of this group stage, Japan, which all I got to say is Endo. (laughs) (laughs) If you are an ACFC fan and you are not a Gene Endo fan, we need to have a conversation. (laughs) She She was like very much like, you know, number 18 on the pitch, number one in your hearts. Like, so well, beloved by this the, fan base. The, the pink <laughs> hair, everything. My June is my favorite player and my daughter's favorite player. Once my daughter put one one together that, like, June has pink hair and the poster we have up from the very first game has June Aww. with the pink hair on there. She goes, yeah. every time she sees it, she's like, Dad, that's June. And I'm like, yep. So... Favorite, yep, that's favorite player in our household. So Japan is <laughs> coming into this World Cup. They're not new. They're not debutants. They're not, you know, fresh to any of, the, of these types of competitions. They have been around uh, all, you know, they're, they're one of these top teams. Japan are coming into this being World Cup champs previously. They won in 2011. And honestly, they're they're one of four teams that have ever won the Women's World Cup. You know, it's Japan. The U.S., who's won it four times, we're on the road to the fifth. 
<laughs> Norway and Germany. So they right. are they are in elite status with, with with teams, you know, with nations in this World Cup. Absolutely. It's one of those things too, just as a quick reminder, this is only the ninth iteration of the Women's World Cup. This is only like a baby of a tournament in the big scheme of things. The first year was in 1991. That is like 30 years ago. It's nothing, you know, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. So to have a team who's won it four times, Germany's won it twice. And then to have Japan and Norway kind of sprinkled in as the other ones, anyone can take this at any given time. Yeah. But when you come in with an experience of winning a big tournament like this, it gives you a little bit of an edge because you know how to prepare your players as a federation a little bit different than someone who's never been in those shoes before. Exactly. And after saying, you know, big team, big stage winners, Japan has actually been rebuilding and reinvesting in their youth, which which is <laughs> exactly which is great. Like, you know, you want to you want to see these national teams building up their future, right? Like all these national mm-hmm. teams really should be having like 10, 20 year plans of really of how they're developing players because you're not just going to pick up players off the street like, hey, you're good. Come play for me. Like <laughs> that doesn't really happen mm-hmm. without the proper. Especially for teams. Without yeah. Without the proper like backing or support or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So they aren't they have been rebuilding and investing in their youth, which, you know, could be a big surprise and Endo being part of that youth rebuilding. Absolutely. The team did find their footing during the She Believes Cup, which is, you know, the invitational that the U.S. hosts. And so I, I think... I believe it's a qualifier as well. So it's it's one of those, like, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, so, I mean, the, the fact that they found their footing and they're kind of gelling and they're kind of getting in place, I think that's going to be big in, in this type of group. So, like we said, we've got Endo. The unfortunate thing is that just, you know, a couple weeks ago, she suffered an injury. She got, you know, her knee banged up. So we were all worried about her. You know, we're all worried about our players, just safety in general. But we were also worried for her missing such a big stage and such a big opportunity. Luckily, they were able to rehab it. It wasn't that big of a deal. At least that's what they told everybody. (laughs) At least that's what we're going off of. (laughs) And she was on the pitch at our match just a few days ago on the 9th. Surprisingly, the the Japanese national team hasn't called everybody in yet. She left after that game. But she did get minutes during during that match, during that win. And so I think we, we will be able to see a lot of her when it comes to this. Another player to totally. watch that we've got on here is another NWSL player. And we've got Hina Sugita, who plays for the Thorns. Like, always been great. She's phenomenal with the Thorns. Just everybody on the Thorns, freaking phenomenal. I feel like the Thorns are a different level. Yeah. So They're just good. <laughs> so those are the two players we're calling out there, two of our NWSL players. I'm pretty sure there's some veteran talent on on the Japanese team yeah. but yeah, yeah. but my my quick googling and getting our our stuff ready I was going to focus on the two you know players that we're going to be able to watch after the World Cup is over Totally yeah and just as a quick little aside Junando might be getting limited minutes based on her injury we don't know for sure regardless she steps like and this kind of goes for anyone you get limited minutes you come in you can still make a huge impact so it would not surprise me if she was a sub, at least in the very beginning, in the group stages especially. If she comes in, she will be on the attack. She wants this so bad. You can tell. She's been, she's on a different level as it is this season in NWSL form, ACFC showing. Like, she's ready for this, and I'm really excited to see what she does this tournament. Yeah. So to make sure that you can find our two selected players on the field, we've got June Endo playing number 13 for the Japanese national team. Not to be confused where she plays number 18 on Angel City. So we're looking for number 13, Endo. Let's see if she colors the hair brighter. <laughs> I know it was kind of growing out I know, I'm curious bit. what she's going to do with her hair. <laughs> and then Hina 
we've got her number 15 with the national team. So those are the two players we've got to watch and super excited about, just excited for the teams that are in this group. And it's just going to be exciting. I think there are, there is no dull group. You know, there's a couple of, right. there's a couple of, you know, groups of death type, type groups, but <laughs> There's there's no <laughs> there's no group that's just going to be like well murr, murr, right like all of them right. have all of them will be great yeah <laughs> all of them have the stars the veterans the newcomers it's going to be great all right so if you are gearing up to watch Japan take on Zambia opening weekend of the 2023 World Cup you'll catch them on Saturday July 22nd game will be airing at midnight so Friday night. Prepare, take a nap. Well, watch the U.S. game and then maybe get some snacks, take a nap, tune in at midnight going into Saturday to catch Japan. It'll be on Fox, NBC Universo for anyone watching Spanish language broadcasts or on Peacock for Spanish as well. I'm kind of mentally defaulting to Peacock in my head because it that way I don't have to worry about Telemundo or, or Universo, so catch it where you can catch it it's going to be a great game they have they both teams are are going to be really fun to watch all right so if you've gotten this far make sure you check us out on all of the different podcasting platforms apple Podcasts, spotify google pod overcast other ones i don't know of or don't know the names of because i just listened to them on spotify you can also check us out on our website casualfc.com where you'll have a link to all the episodes and it will direct you to whichever streaming platform you want to listen to them on. All of our social channels, you can find us at Casual FC Pod, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Threads. I don't know, any more that come up, we'll find a way to get ourselves there. So do us a favor, help us out. Sh- like, ooh, rewind. Do us a favor, help us out. Share the podcast, leave a comment. Let's have some fun.